Let's continue our discussion of elimination reactions. On this slide, note that since one of the two conformers of neomenthyl chloride may not undergo an E2 reaction, notice this one on the left is undergoing E2, and the one on the right is not. And it's because the substituents are not actual on uh, the one on the right. The rate of an the rate of an elimination reaction is affected by the stability of the conformer that does undergo the reaction, which is the more stable of these two, shown here on the left. The reaction is faster if the elimination takes place by way of the more stable conformer. So we'll see that in comparison to the next slide. For example, <clears throat> this slide shows the E2 reaction, again, of the neomenthyl chloride with the X ethoxide ion, it's about 200 times faster than the E2 reaction of menthyl chloride that's shown on the next slide. Why is this so? Because the conformer of neomenthyl chloride that undergoes elimination is the more stable conformer. Because when the chloride and hydrogen are in the required actual position, the methyl and the isopropyl groups are in the equatorial position. Notice that both these two are in actual, and then the other two substituents are equatorial. So let's look at the next slide. You'll see what I mean. In this case, the more stable um, conformer is not going to undergo the E2 reaction, whereas the less stable, the one on the right, will undergo the E2 reaction. Of course, in this case, the conformer of menthol chloride that undergoes elimination is the less stable conformer because when the chloride and the hydrogen are in the required actual positions, the methyl and the isopropyl groups are also in the actual position, as shown here on the right, the less stable conformer undergoing E2 elimination reaction. Let's now look at E1 elimination from cyclic compounds. In an E1 elimination reaction, of a substituted cyclohexane, the reaction is not concerted. So the two groups that are eliminated do not have to both be in actual positions. The first step is the formation of carbocation, as you can see here. It then loses a proton from the adjacent carbon that is bonded to the fewest hydrogens. Of course, this is following Zetsev's rule, as illustrated here, when it loses the proton forming the double bond, and of course now we have formed an alkene, beginning with this cyclic compound. An E1 reaction involves both syn and anti-elimination. Whenever you form a carbocation in an E1 reaction, of course there is the possibility of a carbocation rearrangement actually can rearrange before Zetsev's rule comes into play in the removal of the proton. In this reaction, the secondary carbocation undergoes a 1,2 hydride shift to form a more stable tertiary carbocation. Of course, here in the E1, we have the loss of the bromine, and it forms a carbocation. This is a secondary carbocation, as you can see, a carbon bonded, carbon there, bonded to the carbon with the positive charge. But this hydrogen can undergo a 1-2 hydride shift, move over to the position where the positive charge is. As a result, the positive charge moves over to where the hydrogen was bonded. But now we have a tertiary carbocation. This can occur before uh, Zetsev's rule comes into play as you can see. So we end up with a different product. Here's a table, 11 point, actually 9.4, uh, chapter 9, used to be chapter 11, that summarizes the stereochemical outcome of substitution and elimination reactions. As we've talked about in the past, SN1 and E1 have similar conditions that will promote them, and SN2 and E2 also. And as well, conditions that uh, are similar in regards to their stereochemistry. 
Notice that SN1, both stereoisomers R and S are formed, more inverted than retained, but both isomers will occur. E1, both E and Z stereoisomers are formed, more of the stereoisomer with the bulkiest groups on opposite sides of the double bond, of course. And then SN2, only the inverted product is formed. E2, both E and Z stereoisomers are formed. More of the stereoisomer with the bulkiest groups on opposite sides of the double bond is formed. Unless the beta carbon of the reactant is bonded to only one hydrogen, in which case only one stereoisomer is formed with a configuration that depends on the configuration of the reactant. So this is a good, good table for summarizing the stereochemical outcome of substitution and elimination reactions. Last slide we'd like to look at is mentioning an experimental technique. Experimental evidence was used to derive the mechanisms of SN1, SN2, E1, and E2 reactions. That is the rates of the reaction, the relative reactivities of the reactants, and the structures of the products. Deuterium kinetic isotope effect is another useful experimental evidence that can be used to study a reaction mechanism. What is this ratio equal to? As you can see on the slide, the equation points out deuterium kinetic isotope effect is this ratio, rate constant for hydrogen-containing reactant divided by the rate constant for the deuterium-containing reactant. It is the ratio of the rate constant observed for a compound containing hydrogen to the rate constant observed for an identical compound in which one or more of the hydrogens has been replaced by deuterium and isotope of hydrogen. What does the nucleus of a deuterium contain? In review, of course, one neutron, one proton. What does the nucleus of a hydrogen atom contain? One proton. The chemical properties of these, hydrogen and deuterium, are similar, but the carbon-deuterium bond is stronger than the carbon-hydrogen bond, and so the carbon-deuterium bond is harder to break. The rate constant for the elimination of HBr, hydrogen bromide, from 1-bromo-2-phenylethane, as shown on this slide, compared to the rate constant for the elimination of deuterium bromide, is 7.1 times greater. This is due to the fact that carbon-hydrogen is easier to break than the carbon-deuterium bond. The deuterium kinetic isotope effect is 7.1. Since this number is greater than 1, we know that the carbon-hydrogen or the carbon-deuterium bond must be broken in the rate-determining step. This is consistent with the mechanism for E2. And on this slide, you can see um, here is our 1-bromo-2-phenylethane. And we're going to add the ethoxy, ethoxide ion. And, and as a result, using this, uh, this base, we're going to create an alkene. And of course, this reaction up here is resulting in bromine being given off and ethyl alcohol. Uh, it's distorted on the slide somewhat. But this reaction is 7.1 times faster than the second reaction that's shown here with deuterium in the structure. As you can see, the deuterium in place in the structure of of the reactant. Um, so a carbon-deuterium bond is stronger than a hy carbon-hydrogen bond. The deuterium isotope is, the actually term kinetic isotope effect is 7.1, indicating that the carbon-hydrogen or the carbon-deuterium bond must be broken in the rate-determining step. Okay, that's it.